Glue Wednesday. You see, it's my belief that we don't have to get over. We need to find ways to keep it together. And my glue is G-L-U-E. God's love undoes everything because that's what keeps it together. That life is about going from one puzzle to the next. You're either a small, medium, or large piece of each puzzle in your family, social, or business relationships. Yet, yet, no matter what size puzzle piece you think you are, without you, the puzzle is labeled as incomplete. Hi, and welcome to Glue Wednesday. I'm Sporty King, your host. And you know what? A lot of times people say that Wednesday is hump day. Well, you know I'm word sensitive. And I think that the word hump has the connotation of the need to get over. But let's look at the facts. Wednesday is actually the middle of the seven-day work period. So why don't we look at, at Wednesday as the day that keeps it together. It keeps the week beginning and the weekend together. So it's the glue. And of course, my glue is G-L-U-E. God's love undoes everything. Not that it tears things apart, but that God's love will take anything that you're having a problem with and undo that problem and help you keep it together. Because we're always looking to keep it together. Mm -hmm. This show is about the fact that life is about going from one puzzle to the next. You're either a small, medium, or large piece of the puzzle in each of your family, social, and business interactions. Yet, no matter what size puzzle piece you see yourself as, without you, the puzzle is called incomplete. Welcome to Glue Wednesday. My topic this year, I started off with the topic of suicide. Suicide awareness. And so we've had sessions weeks one and two, and I'm going to close it out today with session three. Now, what I've done is I had actually created this seminar for the, an army, uh, army, active army service base in Massachusetts. And what I did is I said, Everybody, just like I said to you, is an important piece of the puzzle. When, whenever the, when the uh, participants came in, everybody got a little business-sized card that looked like a puzzle piece. And in the upper left-hand corner of each person's card was one of the letters of the word puzzle, P-U-Z-L or E. And so as we went through the seminar, what I did was they had to think of words that began with their letter hmm. regarding suicide awareness. So what does the letter P bring to mind when you think about suicide? What does the letter U? Okay, so for the past, so you need to go back and look at the first two episodes. But it doesn't matter what order you look at them in because the message is, con is con concrete. Okay, but I started with the U. U being understanding. I started with the, uh, then I came back with the P. P being, I forgot. And then I started with the Z. Z <laughs> It's my show. I get to forget. In fact, you know what? If you're an older adult or seasoned citizen, as I like to call us sometimes, not senior, but seasoned citizens, we have the right to forget. Don't let anybody tell you that you're getting senile. You tell them you're exercising your right to forget. And every now and then, you're going to have a brownout as you're going through your right to forget. Not a blackout, but a brownout where the thought just goes away. What happens is we get so frustrated with trying to remember a thought where we say, oh, stupid me, I can't remember and what we actually do is repress the thought even more. If you can't remember something, give yourself five, ten seconds, let it go, move on. That thought wasn't appropriate for that time. It's going to pop up when you most need it. Now, if you don't believe that, that's fine. It's what I believe. And isn't that what life is about? It's about what you believe. We have to be sure that we choose our messengers carefully. And as you choose your messengers, you have to choose the messenger according to what your personal beliefs are. Because, oh, it's all about you. Yes, it is all about you. So make sure that you're recognizing that when you take care of you, you take care of everybody around you. You take care of all the people you love. So have your brown out, have everything else. So now let me get back to the P. Because... I think the P also stands for people. I, I used a lot of words, P.S., by the way, so I'm just trying to give you a quick recap. But the people you surround yourself with, see how that worked together already? The people you surround yourself with, the messengers that you bring into your life will impact whether or not you decide to take your life by suicide. The Z, a lot of people say, well, what could a Z stand for? Well, the Z could stand for zero. Because a lot of times people who decide to take their life by suicide think they have no more options. But in, but in fact, if you look at the word zero and you turn it around and use it positively, zero is the starting point for military time. So it's zero hundred hours. In other words, you get a chance to do it all over again. And if we do the alphabet, the alphabet is A to Z. When you get to the Z in the alphabet, is the world over? No, you get to start over. 
So recognize that Z is zero hours, and it, it also gives us a chance to start again. And then I closed last week with the L. So I'm just going to recap just one part of the L, because L is it was kind of obvious. People are saying, oh, well, L is obviously going to be, mean love. Yes, it is. But I want to start out with the L standing for learn. Because until you embrace this information, until you learn it, then you are not one of the people that we need to help us with preventing suicide. And the, the disorders most often associated with suicide are depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. See, suicide is a treatable mental illness. And that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we covered when we did the U for understanding. Now, we know that suicide is a tragic outcome of a serious underlying mental illness combined with a complicated mix of individual circumstances. But here's what it's not. It is not a sign of moral weakness. It, is not a, it, it does not reveal a character flaw. It is not a sign of irresponsibility or a hostile act. And it should not be a source of shame. Reading that paragraph over and over again until it sinks in can help you make, a, help you make sense of the suicide loss and begin your healing journey. Because those of us who are experienced or connected some, somehow to a suicide have a healing journey of our own to go through. So another thing about the L, the L is also for life. L-I-F-E, lessons intended for everyone. Life is a chance to check your self-discipline, medication, and intuitive insight. It can be a look at your spiritual wellness and help you see that challenge is just change with three extra letters in the middle. Because challenge, change is C-H-A, N-G-E, challenge is C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E. -E. So challenge is just change with three letters in, in the middle. And that, those three letters in the middle, L-L-E, life's learning experiences, those are what make up the, the, the essence of who you are, the learning lessons you get from your life that tell you, I can give this another chance. There's no need for me to give up. Zero is the starting point. You is where I get to understand the people that I bring in my life because the messengers are important. And of course, that I'm learning more and more. See how it all comes together? That's why it's called a puzzle. That's what we have to recognize, that we go through life pulling, pulling the pieces of the puzzle together. And then sometimes you have to recognize that with your puzzle, you may be the centerpiece of your puzzle. If you are the centerpiece of your puzzle, then guess what? Let's go back to the letter P. You have to have patience. Mm -hmm. Because when we start out a puzzle, what are the what's the first thing we do? We put the edges together. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're in the middle, you have to be patient and wait for your puzzle to come together so that you can really see the P picture of your life. You see how they all come together once you start using it? Mm -hmm. So if you will have that patience with yourself, that personal self, that you, then you will be able to put your puzzle together and you'll see that your life is valuable. We don't have a V in puzzle, but we can get it in because when I get to love, I'm going to say L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. You see, you have to recognize that your life is so valuable that the people around you want to see you the next day. In fact, they want to see you the next minute. We already do the bravest thing we could do every day. Every day when we lay down and close our eyes and go to sleep, that's the bravest thing you can do because you have no guarantee that you're going to wake up. So have you given yourself credit for just how brave you show yourself to be every day? That's another reason for you to decide not to take your life by suicide. If you notice there's a switch, by the way, a lot of times you hear people say committing suicide. Yeah. Well, the upgraded vocabulary and, and term is taking my life or taking their life by suicide because committing sounds like you have accomplished something. Mm -hmm. and, and suicide is not an accomplishment. And, and you also then, what, what you do when you say committing suicide, you're also making a person's loved one sound like a statistic rather than valuing them as an individual whose life has been lost. So try to start that way by using the term taking their life by suicide. Okay, so that's life. Ch and as I was saying to you, change is very small. See, the reason we think we're uncomfortable with change because we look at change as this huge thing, but change is very small. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, years ago I was in a doctor's office, and so I was talking to the woman who was getting ready to take my blood, and since she knew I was a motivational speaker, she started to ask me a question. <clears throat> and she said, she said, look, how come I can't, and I stopped her right there. Mm -hmm. I said, before you even go any further, I don't even know, need to know the rest of your sentence, but let's change the word can't to won't. 
See, that little change in, in her vocabulary made the difference because as soon as she changed it to won't, she had to smile because she recognized, how come I won't let this happen? Because there's no such thing as you can't do it. The only thing you cannot do is give up. And that's why you have to find ways to keep reconnecting to your faith, your mm -hmm. faith and reconnecting to your faith. That's how you will deal with change. When you recognize that any change that doesn't happen in your life is a change that you won't do, not that you can't do. Because you have to also remember that piece of the puzzle that's in the middle. If you've got the patience, then the change will come. We, we oftentimes hear people say, well, when my ship comes in, well, your ship may come in, your turn may come, but it might not be your time. And so as we are finding ways to be comfortable with who we are, we're willing to spend that time, quality time, P.S., by the way, waiting for things to come together for us. It's not about acknowledging and thanking God when things happen. It's about acknowledging and thanking God because things will happen. Mm -hmm. And that's why they end up happening. And then, you, and then, just like you said, you don't get blessed because you're such a wonderful person. You get blessed because God is a wonderful God. So as we start to take all of those things that we actually believe, and or actually sometimes we say we believe, that's why I think it's important to recognize here comes the P. You have to make sure that you don't practice what you preach, but that you preach what you practice. Because a lot of times we'll give people information and, re and, and, and advice that we wouldn't do ourselves. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why it's important to choose your messengers carefully. Make sure that they're giving you advice that they would be willing to take as well. Okay, so let's go on with the letter L. I already gave you a spoiler alert that the L is L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. Recognize that you have value in this life. We need you not only love yourself, but we need you to like yourself. See, liking is the cherry on the cake. Most people love themselves, but a lot of people don't like themselves. Haven't you ever said, oh, I don't like how I look in this outfit. I don't like how I acted when I was this and that. You know, we, we talk to our spirit and we say we don't like ourselves. We very rarely, have you ever said, oh, I don't love me? But you'll say, I don't like me. So make sure that you talk to your spirit and put that cherry on the cake and like yourself. In fact, we had a uh, strawberry shortcake that we're going to have at the mint at the end of our taping today. And so in case you don't get a cherry to put on it, we're going to have some strawberries to put on it. Oh, don't get excited. You're not getting any. But the key <laughs> is that you're getting food for thought. And that will fill you up just as much. But I'm going to get that food from my stomach. That's why I'm going fast. Okay, so the next letter is the letter L. We're staying with the letter L, and the next word is laughter. Laughter is so important to your well-being. Uh, I'm in a, an organization, I was a member of an organiza organization called AATH, which is the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. They believe in the healing power of laughter. In fact, there's a whole, uh, Cancer Treatment Centers of America has a whole therapy program on laughter, um, laughter therapy for people who are going through cancer. And I know a lot of people are interested in cancer research, so check into Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't mind giving them a plug. They're a wonderful organization. Meanwhile, back to AATH, Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor, the laughter part, try to find ways to use improv. Improv is a very good um, uh, uh, therapeutic way to get yourself into laughter. Im improv, P.S., by the way, is short for improvisation. So uh, improv is find a way of, of, of using your comedy to lift your spirits up. Also, you can subscribe to my newsletter, and actually I call it my fun letter. It's the Golden Brick Road. And what you can do is you can go to my website, sportyking.com, and you can go to the page that says fun letter, and you can go in there, enjoy the fun letter, and then go in and, and or you can go and enjoy it and don't even ask for me to send it to you every month. That's okay, because the key is that you get nourished. It's not always about who nourishes you. So I don't have to get credit for it, <clears throat> but you have to give yourself credit. So go in there and check it out, okay? But make sure that you laugh and joke. Because one of my favorite sayings is that I laugh and joke, but I don't play. Because the truth is that I will tell jokes, I will smile, but I'm very serious about saving lives. I know that I save lives. You need to recognize that you save them too. Put it on your resume. In fact, if you brought children into this world or volunteered your time to support a worthy cause, your time or your money to support a worthy cause, you've saved lives. Think about it. And once you realize that you are a lifesaver, you can embrace that. See, embracing God, God's gifts is not about what you, do, what you do on the surface. It's about what you feel on the inside. And, and one of the things, like some, one time I was speaking and this guy said to me, well, at what point do you become arrogant? I said, whenever you choose to. Mm -hmm. 
Because the truth is, the, the way I look at it, if God is good and if I'm God, if I'm made in the image of God and I'm God's son, if God is good, then I'm good. Because I always say I'm just riding God's, God is good and I'm just riding his coattails. And they're very good coattails, P.S., by the way. So make sure you do that. Let's keep with the letter L. We've got a little bit of time left. The L is for loss also. L-O-S-S, -S, little obstacle strength in our spirits. See, a lot of times we think that a loss is a big thing. But the, the, and it is in the moment. But there's just a little obstacle. The biggest obstacle, one of my biggest losses was when my mother died. And in fact, we just finished the 11th, 11th year anniversary of her death and because when she died my biggest rebound was look was from losing her because she died in my arms and so what I had to do instantly and I didn't do it very instantly PS by the way I had to come up with a way to deal with the fact that I was going to have to tell my sister and my brothers about her last moments and her last words you know I'm an inspirational speaker right I'm supposed to be able to get positive well what I did is I realized that God has chosen me as the only one in my family that could have handled that situation and that's how I was able to deal with it. Now, oh, P.S., by the way, don't think I didn't cry. I cried for a while, but once I got my cry out of the way, I had to get my business on the deal. You know, because you got to take care of your mother, you got to take care of your family and friends. The, they, you know that joke they always say that the person who acts up the most at the funeral was the one that didn't, ha didn't handle their business while they were there? We had a ball with my mother while she was alive. So therefore, when she died, our consciences were clear. Now, I'm not saying my mother took a life by suicide. I know it sounds like I'm talking about death and it's in the same topic. No, it's just talking about losses. So make sure that you're spending the time you need to spend with people right now. That would also be something that could help somebody and make them decide not to take their life by suicide. The fact that they know how important they are in your life, which helps them see the importance in theirs. Meanwhile, if you've lost someone to suicide, you may feel alone, shocked, responsible, angry, abandoned, ashamed, guilty, or relieved. All these different emotions. See, no emotion is wrong. It's what we do with them that makes a difference. But don't worry, because it's normal to have some, all, or, or just one of those emotions and these feelings as you cope with suicide loss. But what you need to know is that you're not alone. There's somebody else who understands your pain because they're going through the same thing or have been through it. So let's move on to the letter E. Since I said someone's going through it, in other words, everyone's going through something. Everyone is touched in some way by the tragedy of suicide. So my E words are the first one is encourage. Most of the time when someone thinks or talks about suicide, they actually have mixed feelings about it, about dying. Most often, suicidal feelings come from having a mental illness, and these illnesses can be treated with professional help. Medication, talk therapy, or a combination of the two have been shown to save lives. The best way to, to help is to encourage and assist the suicidal person to get the help that they need. Well, what should I do if I encourage a person to get help and they don't want to? I'm glad you asked. Look, to someone feeling suicidal, depressed, depressed or anxious, the idea of talking to a doctor or a mental health professional can seem overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Sometimes suicide seems like the only way to control their pain. So continue to tell them that you are concerned about that and to suggest that a professional who understands what they are feeling can help them to feel better. Let them know that you are there to listen and offer help finding or getting to a doctor, mental health professional, or a hospital emergency room. You can also help by staying with them and calling the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I'm sorry, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Or if you are concerned that the person will hurt themselves, call 911. Another E, expectations. And this E is where you, the person who is thinking about taking their life by suicide, may sometimes be have the challenge that that people have a high expectation of who they are. And since they can't meet that expectation, they may decide that they are a failure. So they could have unreal, unrealistic expectations about themselves or how they please others. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those expectations are what they think someone else is expecting from them and then feeling that they can't live up to them is again what makes them decide to take their lives. When I did this research for an army group, um, 
uh, when I did this research, it was for an army group, so I want to share this analogy that I gave them. One, recovery is possible, and for veterans, part of recovery is learning to move through grief resolution and embrace what they're going through. And it will be dealing with they'll be dealing with for the rest of, dealing with it for the rest of their lives. So will you if you're going through that situation. Sometimes though, with a, with our veterans, you know, they gotta be aware of the triggers. Sometimes it's a smell. Sometimes it's a sound. It could even be the burning hair on your arm while lighting a barbecue pit, and it could be a, that could be a flashback to a bad sight. Um, a, a veteran could be driving down the road and hears the backfire in their old car. And the veteran may think that it's the road, it's, it's an IED explosive on a the road. They could see someone walking down the street toward them with a hoodie and think it's a suicide bomber. Everybody's got their triggers. So what you want to do is try to find out what your triggers are. And, and a lot of people, I, I know some people say when they walk across the bridge, they, they, you know, they, they, they get that anxiety about being over the water. And, and so that, that could be a, a spot that could be a trigger that they would want to make sure that they stay away from because it might make them think about jumping over. Who knows? All right? But always, you know, what you want to do is try to find out what your triggers are. And that's why the, the E goes on to be education. Mm -hmm. Learn more about how you can help someone who may be thinking about suicide. Also, educate yourself so that you can know that you have resources in case you're considering suicide or suffering mm -hmm. from any type of depression. Get to know some of the systems. And we can go back to the letters in puzzle. The U, unwanted. That could be a, a symptom if you're feeling unwanted. The P, you could feel poor. Not just economically, but you may be feeling sorry for yourself. Or you may feel economically poor and feel like, well, because I'm poor, I need to get rid of my life. You know, I have no value to the world. The Z, we already talked about the zero, where you may think you have no options. The L, we already talked about how important it is to like yourself. Mm -hmm. So keeping with the letter E, one of the symptoms could be expenses. Sometimes our budgeting becomes an issue that makes someone decide that they want to take their life because they're expenses. So be careful about that. Keeping with the E, closing us out soon. Easy, one of my favorite acronyms. E-A-S-Y, expect angels to save you. See, you have to decide that you are going to be okay. Check your spiritual barometer and recognize that an angel does not have to be religious. Okay, who can you have, who, who can you confide in? That could be your angel. What do you really believe? Do you believe, you know, how empathetic are you? That's an E also, but your angel could be empathetic. And because you have to keep asking, why is this happening? Why am I going through it? We can also let the Y stand for yesterday, because yesterday could be a could be a trigger too. Thinking about the past. Mm -hmm. You know, these these different types of triggers, they, they come from all different angles, so don't decide if there's one way that's going to happen. Also, what do you regret about your life? See, I don't do regret. Whatever happened in my life, I made mistakes. We all make mistakes. I don't do regret. I am solely connected and committed to believing in God to where the point that whatever goes, what other people may decide is wrong in my life, I recognize it as a part of my journey. The Bible that I read has plenty of people who misstepped and now become mm. our prophets and, and our role models. So how do we therefore decide that when we make a mistake that we should be regretting it? Maybe David, maybe we better take a, a, a lesson from David on not doing regret, okay? And that would take us to that E of empathy. You have to understand, I never say to someone, look, I know what you're going through. I've been in your shoes. Uh, no, I have no idea what you're going through, but I've been in your room. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are going through something. So that's the empathy that you have to have. Not telling someone that you know what they're going through, but letting them understand that you are not a perfect uh, model that they may be looking at and modeling themselves as. Maybe they're spiritually competing with you. Oh, you've got it all going on, sporty. You know, you this. Let me tell you something. I'm not positive 365 days, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But I'm positive more than I'm negative. I'm up more than I'm down. I'm going forward more than I'm moving backwards. And there's nothing wrong with moving backwards when we just reframe that. Instead of, instead of calling it moving backwards, recognizing that every now and then you just need to step back mm. and check out your work. So as we start to recognize, that goes right back to that cherry on the cake of liking ourselves. Step back and give yourself credit. You've made a lot of good decisions in your life. A lot of good decisions. 
Don't let taking your life be one of those decisions because we need you so that we can go forward in this life. A lot of times people say, well, the, you know, I'm planning for the future. P.S. By the way, the future is now. Have anybody ever made it to the future? Every time you get there, it's the present. So why not live and enjoy it? <laughs> We're in the future. We are living Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. Let's stop acting like this thing is, is, a, is a carrot that's dangling out in front of us that we can't achieve. We're living the dream because things have changed. But the change doesn't look the way we wanted it to because when we have a dream and we say we want change, we make a picture of excellent change, of optimal change. But change, like we talked about earlier, and challenge, it's a small thing. So appreciate the small things that has, have changed in your life and the small changes that you have made to make this a better world. So I'm going to just give you some quick true or false um, statements before we get out of here. One, the presence of risk factors guarantees a suicide attempt. False. That's saying if there's a gun around, if there's a knife around, that someone's going to commit suicide. That's not true. It's all, it's, so it's the presence of the risk factors does not guarantee a suicide. Mm -hmm. Suicide was was the leading was one of the leading causes of death for all military branches in 2014. True, more so than war. Suicide occurs most often during the holidays. False. It gets more press during the holidays because people decide to connect the holidays with suicidal thinking because they're feeling more depressed because that's when they see other people celebrating families and they feel that they're not. So no, suicide is every single day. Every 12.3 minutes someone takes their life by suicide, it has nothing to do with the holidays. It just gets better press. Early intervention decreases the likelihood of suicide. Yes. Yes, so that's why the, the sooner you can find out and get some help. We always hear that little joke, oh, you're not taking your meds. It's a true statement. You have to, if you're on medication, there's no, no shame in taking medications. You take an aspirin, I take Motrin because I'm going to go work out, and I'm an old dude, i got to take Motrin. And so the thing is, if I'm not ashamed to take a, a body relaxer, muscle relaxer, why should I be ashamed to take, here some, take a, a, a medication that's going to help me continue to live my life the best way I can, okay? Uh, okay, most of the time people who plan suicide do not give any advance warning, true and false, because the challenge is sometimes we can't read the warnings. But when you see people starting to give their stuff away, when you see people are constantly complaining about how depressed they are, which is not always a sign, because some people are just negative and that's just their conversation. They always talk about what's going wrong and they're like, you know how, you, haven't you ever said to somebody, how you doing? And then you say, Ugh, I couldn't pull the word back. As soon as you said, how you doing? You know, here they come. Oh, child, let me tell you. And you know it's coming. All right. So that's, again, that's why it's a, it could be a sign, but it might not be a sign. So that's why it's hard to see. So forgive yourself for missing the signs of someone who takes their life by suicide. Because uh, uh, survivor's remorse is, 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 is a tough thing to deal with. When we think, what could I have done to keep them from being suicidal? There's nothing you could do. What you can do is try to prevent the next suicide. Mm -hmm. See, always, that's the way you want to. And P.S., by the way, don't you put yourself on the list. All right. Uh, I want to skip to this one point because I got less than seconds to go. But uh, younger, uh, the the in in 2013, the highest suicide rate, 19.1, was in my age group, 45 to 64. And apparently, I'm not out of the water 20 years later because the second group was 85 and older, and that was 18 percent. But it's it's interesting to find that younger groups have consistently lower suicide rates than middle-aged and older people. But the, the, the majority of the younger group's suicide attempts are in the 15 to 24 year bracket. That's 10%, 10.6%. And if you think about it, that's in that uh, high school, college, getting a career started um, framework. So that could be where a lot of the stress comes in. So start to look at that if you're in, in that age group or you have someone in that age group as well. Recognize too that sometimes the suicide attempt is not necessarily connected to any type of real depression. It could be connected to, uh, for instance, a, a sexual assault. It could be something that someone is dealing with that that they're ashamed of, or you know, um, and by the way, and I got that from when I was doing this for the military. I, I, there's a case about a woman who she was sexually assaulted, assaulted by her commanding officer, 
and she had to live with that and because naturally they wouldn't believe her versus him and so her living with that is one of the things that drove her to deciding to take her life by suicide so again it's not it's not always an obvious on the surface type thing that you can say how come i missed that don't you let yourself fall into that trap. It's a, it's a very hard thing to diagnose, especially if you're not a professional. Again, that's why you want to make sure you get some professional help if, if possible. So, again, more importantly, uh, recognize that some people can't talk about suicide. Talking with someone about their thoughts of dying will push them over the edge. False. Just because you talk about it does not mean that they're going to... That's not going to push them over there. You can't say, oh, God, they look suicide. Maybe I better not talk about it. No, maybe you better talk about it because that could be what pulls them back in. Do what you have to do. But the most important thing that you want to talk about is recognize and remind yourself that you are in the business of saving lives. You are here to stop the next suicide. And you are an important piece of every puzzle, whether it's a small, medium, or large piece. Without you... That puzzle is seen, is called incomplete. You can get information that I've given you. It's on um, AS, AFSP.org, American Federation for Suicide Prevention.org. And learn about their Out of the Darkness walks, which are, you know I've attended, and they're great walks. Uh, you can also find out about, about combating teen suicide through my affiliate site, heyugly.org. That's H-E-Y-U-G-L-Y.org. And if you're wondering, ugly, yes, unique, gifted, lovable you. I told you I'm world sensitive, turning negatives into positives. And finally, you can find out more about me at www.sportyking.com. But meanwhile, I'll be on the Wake Up Call radio and TV show network. Always happy to bring you an inspirational message. Finding ways to not hump, not to get over, but to glue, to keep it together. On Glue Wednesday with Sporty King. Ciao. <laughs> Last week I closed the show with, a, with my poem, I Found Out I'm Dying, from the book So Named. This week I'm going to close it with the sequel to that poem. It's called I Found Out I'm Living. And it's in my book, Your Name Came to Mind. I found out I'm living. You see, actually, I've known it for quite some time now, yet only at a surface level. And again, I thank you, God, for yesterday, as much as I do for today. And I ask that you, my friends, join me in recognizing that the challenge of this roller coaster ride called life is even greater when you take responsibility for your actions and self. For as I am able to look at where I was and what I did, it becomes more evident to me who I am. And, though that, and through that realization, I extend my hand to touch you, actually to feel you, because in my position as conduit of good spirits, the physicality of our sharing pales in comparison to how and why we must love one another. I found out I'm living. And when I woke up this morning, I praised that vision that I might be allowed to ride his coattails and see him in my every decision. I sat by the window and took in another breath, for somehow, somewhere, someone didn't. So I checked my five senses for their alignment with my sixth sense, thus my ability to experience, 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 and experience, while my smile sent a flush of joy to every tip of this temporary body I occupy and came back in an unspoken word of comfort. I read the word to exercise my soul of fear. I recognized what others call miracles as the blessings that were always there. I found out I'm living and that I have been since day number one. Yet it was not until I released my physical self that I was really able to give God the glory and thanks for all that I've done. I'm Sporty King. This has been Blue Wednesday.